Several years ago, a neighbor bought the house behind me, tore it down, and built a monstrosity that overlooked my backyard. Now, in an attempt to screen out the view, I planted bamboo. Problem was, I watered it daily, I cultivated, I took care of it, and nothing happened. Then five years later, it grew 80 feet in two weeks. Now, I think there's a story here that also relates to our Q3 forecast. We're halfway through the year, and 2025 is looking like it's still going to end up somewhere around $2.2 trillion in total construction spending. That's basically unchanged from where we were in 2024. And when we look forward over the next five years, say to the end of the decade, 2029, total construction will probably increase somewhere to the range of $2.5 trillion, which equates to roughly 3% year-over-year growth. So all this suggests sort of a flat but really kind of stable market going forward. But really when we're looking at construction spending across all 19 segments from single family homes to office and manufacturing and highway and street, everything's falling somewhere between zero and 6% year over year growth for the next five years. Now, I think sometimes we have to think of that growth sort of in perspective. So take manufacturing which is at 0%, essentially flat for the next five years, compared to lodging, which includes hotels and motels, which is growing at 6%, so that high end of the range. But we have to think about volume as well, because even though manufacturing is flat, let's say at 0%, you're still talking about a market that's somewhere in the neighborhood of $230 billion in annual spend. Compare that to lodging, which is at $23 billion. So a tenth of the size of manufacturing. So as you're thinking about opportunities and where you might try to chart growth over the next couple of years, we have to kind of balance out that growth versus size of market. So why does the market feel sluggish? Well, probably for two primary reasons. One is that residential remains weak due to ongoing affordability challenges. But two, on the non-residential side, it's really sort of a mixed bag with a lot of the largest segments with big spend like manufacturing that just seem to be stuck in neutral gear. But I really think part of the story too is that this is a tale of two halves. I mean, this back half of the decade is marked by one period of maybe slow or even contracting growth, while the back half seems to be more of an accelerant out of that. So take, for example, we look at 19 different segments. And if I look at 25 and 26, and I look at those segments that are actually in contraction, meaning the growth over the next two years is somewhere under 0%, well, of those 19, roughly about a third of those are in that category. But by the end of the decade, that 30% in contraction moves to less than 5%. Now, if I compare that from an inflation perspective, so let's just place it at 3%, well, 60% of those segments are either neutral or below inflation or contracting. But again, by the end of the decade, it goes from 60 to 25%. So given that outlook of a relatively flat market overall, but also this tell of two has, if you will, I think it's also important to think about why do owners build in the first place? Now, aside from single family homes and maybe a few other instances, I really think it comes down to one of three reasons. It's either A, to enable the exchange of a service. So think about a school, a hospital, or even an airport. To facilitate production, so a factory, but even a warehouse. Or to seek a financial return, so a developer-driven apartment complex or shopping center. So if you think about your exposure based on like why an owner may build or what segments you might be in, and you're thinking about the future, not only think about in terms of the pursuits you might have to achieve that growth, but what also might be required from an investment standpoint, whether that's in people or equipment or partnerships. There's a lot more to unpack here, and that's why I recommend that you download the full report at fmicorp.com. Better yet, talk to one of our consultants or what our investment bankers about the specifics of your own situation. And going back to my earlier story about the bamboo, now is the time to water the roots because when the market does break through, only those who prepared will be tall enough to see above the noise.